universal antidotes, panacea, detoxification elixir. These words have been keeping the medical community up at night, starting from the first witch and wizards, all the way to the modern toxicologist. Just think about it. How amazing would it be to find the universal cure, like finding the holy grail in a way. So whether it is to treat or to fight poisons and venom, to treat drug overdoses, or to help you cure your hangover Sundays, antidotes have always been a matter of uh, public concern, generally surrounded by a little bit of magic. But you will see that their development are far from being scientifically absurd, and that they actually played a central and, and crucial role into the development of the modern medicine as we know it today. Speaking of today, this is what you can find on the internet seeking for detoxification. Just add some burnt toast to that, and voila, you're detoxified. But my talk today will go beyond these uh, original breakfast recipe and navigate throughout anecdotes, historical legend surrounding this uh, universal antidote. So let's take a step back together and move to times before toasters and juicers were even invented. We can actually go quite far back, as poisoning have always been represented in the first traces of human history. For example, Hercules was poisoned by his wife who dipped his tunic into the poisoned blood of a centaur he just killed. And the Egyptian mythology has quite a fair share of poisoning stories as well. For example, Ra was poisoned by a snake. Horus, still being a newborn, was poisoned by a scorpion. And Serket, quite on the opposite, is the goddess of healing. So her job was to cure any poisoning stings or bites. So she definitely had and developed the very first universal antidote. Too bad she didn't write the recipe for us. But following the good examples of God, men also started to master the art of poisoning. They found several poison, extracted them from plant and natural substances, and they used it in wars, for example, to poison arrows, also poison bullets, but also used them in the society. And what you can see here is a representation of the death of Socrates, who was sentenced to drink the poison hemlock. Hemlock is a very poisonous plant, which is still today causing some intoxication. So poison became very popular uh, in the society. But why is it so? For several reasons. First of all, they were numerous, they were easy to produce, they were cheap to manufacture. They were also easy to implement, right? Just a few drops in a good red wine, and that should do the trick. They were also impossible to detect, and uh, sometimes impossible to treat. But these uh, increase in poison, this rise of poisoning, were also scaring the population, and especially the high society, which was the main target of this poison attack. And here we'll briefly go through the legend of Mithridates, which is quite amusing. So Mithridates was a powerful king. He was ruling of, on Pontus, which is now uh, what you know as the north of Turkey. You can see it in green here on the map. Uh, Mithridates was also the top one most wanted enemy of what was the Roman FBI at the time. So knowing that, knowing that Rome wanted him dead, he was completely paranoid of being poisoned. So he was so scared that he studied the poison in great detail. He tested them on slaves, he tested them on war criminals, and he also ingested some uh, small doses of poison himself. He actually concocted, together with his, with his doctor, a universal antidotal potion that contained more than 40 ingredients, among them some small dosage of poison, of course some good red wine, some spices, but also some plant, including the one that killed uh, Socrates, for example. So, so far so good. I mean, he was drinking this potion every day as a prophylaxis to give him immunity. He was a smart guy, you will say, and I would agree. But the thing here is that when Pompey, which was the Roman emperor at the time, invaded his kingdom, 
Mithridates was so accustomed to poison that he failed to commit suicide by poisoning himself. Yeah, so his antidote completely backfired on him, and that's what made it so popular and so interesting. So the story wants, the legend wants, that Pompey found a recipe, brought it back to Rome, translated into Latin, and made of this antidote the most celebrated all-purpose cure. And of course, throughout antiquity, this cure, which is called a teriac, evolved and was optimized. And the central man here that was really optimizing this teriac is Galen. And you probably have recognized the name. Galen was the central figure of medicine in the Roman era. He actually was the father of the Galenic preparation, or the drug formulation. Gael knew that uh, the preparation of a medicine, such as the teriac, is as important as the active ingredient contained inside. So Gael did extensive work on this teriac. He did a lot of research and even tested them on animals, which was not common at the time because we are just 150 years after Christ. And his final optimized formulation contained more than 70 ingredients with a lot of opiums some viper flesh, and was supposed to mature for seven years into one of these porcelain jar, as you can see here on the screen. And he also published a very precise recipe on posology, which survived throughout the medieval Europe in Italy, France, and Germany, where it was part of the pharmacopoeia as an all-purpose cure until the 19th century. So the work of Galen into this uh, antidote and his very precise publication was really the foundation of the modern medicine regulation, kind of the foundation of the pharmacopoeia. Another antidote, universal antidote, which is worth mentioning, is activated charcoal, which is a very fine carbon powder with very large surface area and which can easily bind toxins and poisons. It is actually an oral decontaminant, and you will use it after having ingested poisonous substance. This activated charcoal inside of your stomach will bind all these poisonous substance and prevent them from entering further into your body. It has been used for quite some century with quite some skepticism, and it's really in the mid of the 19th century that it started to become very popular with the demonstration of Pierre Fleury's Twerry. So Twerry was giving a talk to the French Medicine Academy in Paris. And in front of all of his colleagues, he decided to take 10 times the lethal dose of a dangerous poison called strychnine. And together, he took, took 15 grams of his activated charcoal and then just waited, waited, waited again, and nothing happened. And then he walked off stage unharmed and made it until the end of the conference. So this courageous demonstration was really the start of the universal use of activated charcoal as an oral decontaminant. But a bit later, in the United States, originated a similar universal antidote that was also supposed to bind toxins, the burnt toast. The original recipe actually included some laxatives and some strong black tea. Although it might look funny, these, there is some scientific ground behind it. So the burnt toast, or actually the powder of the burnt toast, was supposed to absorb toxin into your stomach, just as the activated charcoal. The tannic acid was supposed to precipitate the heavy metal, and the laxative was supposed to balance your acidity. However, uh, burnt toast have almost no absorbing power, and if they would absorb something, it would be the tannic acid, which is actually itself uh, hepatotoxic, thereby exacerbating the problem. So definitely, this uh, universal antidote is ineffective and obsolete, and can do more harm than good, because it takes an awful amount of time to prepare, and when you are poisoned, you better run to the closest hospital rather than preparing what looks like an English breakfast. So moving on, I so far presented poisoning to toxic substance, to poisons. But actually, intoxication can be the cause of a variety of chemicals, good substances and bad substances. And this concept has been uh, cleverly described by Paracelsus in his thesis. And he wrote, what it is that is not a poison? 
everything is poisonous, only the dose differentiates a poison from a remedy. Meaning that pharmaceutical compounds, medicines, drugs, which are supposed to do good, can be extremely dangerous as well when taken into excess. And this duality uh, of healthy and harmful is actually anchored into the name itself of pharmaceuticals, which comes from pharmacon, uh, which was used in ancient Greece to describe both the cure and the poison. So the rise of the unintentional overdoses to pharmaceutical compounds really kicked off with the increasing popularity of the barbiturates during the 20th century. During this time, the chemists went kind of crazy and synthesized more than 25,000 of these barbiturates, 50 of which were eventually used clinically. A good example is pentobarbital that you can see on this screen. During this time, it was used as a sedative, so as a sleeping pill, in small dosage. And pentobarbital is still used today in larger doses as lethal injection. So here as well, the words of Paracelsus make sense precisely. Only the dose makes the poison. So the population started to use and abuse of this pharmaceutical more and more, inevitably leading to fatal drug overdoses. In terms of detoxification, the goal at that time was to wake up the patient as fast as possible. So the physician used a lot of stimulants and analeptics, starting from caffeine. But today, the, the goal, uh, the idea of waking up the patient abruptly has been abandoned. So are all these uh, analeptic, all of these except the last one, Ritalin, which is used today for the treatment of ADHD, and which still uh, survived as well in the nightlife, as it is very popular there. So in the late 60s, the popularity of heroin took over the barbiturates, but also took away some great talents from the doors, from the Sex Pistols or from Nirvana, just to name a few of them. Heroin itself was then followed by cocaine and more recently by prescription drug. And you can see here on the screen the dramatic epidemic of drug-related uh, death that is affecting the United States right now. But this is just an example of what is happening worldwide. So we're really living in an epidemic of drug overdoses. Currently, the drug the most commonly found in fatal intoxication are also the one very popular in the media and in the TV show, such as Valium or Xanax, or the opioid painkillers such as Oxycodone or Vicodin. Actually, in the United States, the sales of the opioid painkillers have more than quadrupled over the past 15 years, although the American didn't significantly show more pain. There is today enough prescription written to give one full bottle of this powerful medicine to every American, which is plenty for an overdose. So this overprescription led to the dramatic increase I showed before, 120% increase in less than 10 years. This is really a dramatic epidemic. Today, worldwide, there is 500 people dying from drug overdose every day. This is crazy. It's one person every three minutes, or six person by the end of my talk, if I don't hurry up. Just as a comparison, drug overdose kill more people than car accidents or firearm weapons. So as a response to this epidemic, the scientists came up with a various uh, ID and creative uh, systems to counteract the toxicity of these overdose drugs. And a popular system is the injection of vector into the patient that will bind or encapsulate toxin directly into the bloodstream. And the idea is very simple. If the toxin or if the drug is encapsulated, it loses its toxicity, therefore uh, making the patient out of danger. And our work into this field was mainly focused on what you can see on the upper right side of the screen, what we called liposomes. And you can imagine liposome as being very small spheres, empty spheres, which can capture and encapsulate all the excess of drugs uh, from your body. But more, our most recent and probably most important innovation was to administer this liposome in a peritoneal dialysis setup. Peritoneal dialysis is a very easy medical procedure, which is today implemented in any medical facilities. 
It is a little bit like normal dialysis, but instead of cleaning the blood outside of your body, it cleans it inside and uses your natural membrane as filters to, to clean your blood. The procedure involves filling up the belly of the patient with a certain amount of liquid. In our case, we will have our detoxifying uh, liposomes inside. Let this liquid sit there for a few hours, and during these few hours, the drugs will be able to diffuse from the blood towards the liquid, and if we have our liposomes there, they will encapsulate and trap all these drugs that diffuse and greatly enhance this diffusion process. And at the end of the therapy, we can just simply remove this liquid, which is loaded with the drug uh, inside the vesicles. So this, um, this, the outcome of this therapy is a very rapid removal of the drug from your body and a fast detoxification of the patient. But the beauty here really lies on its versatility, as we not only can remove drugs, but we can also remove poisons and toxic metabolic waste that your own body produces. And actually, if we think about it, your body is a remarkable poison factory. Everything you eat, drink, or even breathe is cut down into small pieces, some of which, which are healthy, will be used as building blocks for your body, while the others, which are toxic, will be eliminated by your liver. So you can imagine that when you have a liver failure, these poisonous, toxic waste will accumulate into your body, leading to a very rapid and fatal intoxication if you don't have a detoxification therapy to remove them. So whether it is to treat drug overdoses or to treat a patient with acute liver failure, the product we develop is really a life-saving therapy. And this is really what is driving us every day to translate it towards the clinic. So today I presented you an overview of the different universal antidote, and I also introduced our innovative strategy of detoxification, which is surely better than burnt toast, but also highly promising because it can be implied for several drugs and also several diseases, such as liver failure. But, uh, and I have to say it now, it is not ready for alcohol detoxification, so, so please don't abuse of the refreshments later on. Thank you very much.